All right, Matt, welcome back. We're going to dive into the second banter topic, okay? When people visit us, we recommend them to go to a variety of different eateries around, but we always recommend soul food at the top of the list. What was your experience at soul food? I have no words. (laughs) Honestly, (laughs) uh, so good, man. Um, I believe you said life changing yesterday when you described your your meal. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to feel like it's an exaggeration, but it it was pretty epic. Uh, It felt very, very authentic. It was a great experience. First of all, the owner would come around and just kind of introduce himself and ask us where we're from and suggest other local restaurants to go check out. Oh wow! And just was telling us about his family and all the ingredients that they're cooking with and that is an experience that i'm not often exposed to from where i'm from like because there's a lot of chain restaurants around there um and it just felt like i was part of the community it was really cool yeah Yeah. and it's cool because it's it's a fast casual place it's not like you sat down with like a waiter and we were it was probably not like i mean it's not like an hour hour and a half meal it's like we had our food in five minutes yeah yeah and and we were full within 20 minutes yeah sweet sweet (laughs) sweet, it was great so yeah anybody that's coming to visit Soul, Soul Food's food. the place in Marin County, uh, up here in San Rafael. They got a couple locations. We are not sponsored by them, but we love them. <laughs> and I have, yeah. So if I've, you're listening, <laughs> they've, I, uh, they've been. I don't know how many years they've been in in Marin, but I do remember when they opened up. It's like you can't miss the restaurant. It's this giant green building in the middle of like downtown, and it's the only one that looks like that. And it's popping in there. Oh man, it's always popping. Yeah. And they're playing. It's Puerto Rican food, and they've got like great music playing in there. And it, yeah, they've yeah. actually they've packed. And the one thing that really stood out to me was like, I was like, okay, so where are we gonna sit? And he's like, there's some seats there, 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 and he's pointing at tables that are already full with yeah, like oh, yeah, a yeah, couple yeah. seats free. And I'm like, really? Like just go Yo. join them? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be at a big big table with yeah. other people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, at first I was taken back. I was like, "This that seems strange." And then I go sit down, and everyone's chatting, and it's like, "Yeah, cool, super cool, great experience." And did you have a favorite uh, thing that you got on the menu? I don't even know what we got. <laughs> there was so much of it, though. Like we were starving by the time we ordered, and yeah, we're just yeah, like, yeah. "You tell us what to get." And they brought us like six plates, and oh, sweet. we kind of rolled out of there. But yeah, it was that's it, the way to do it. Yeah, there, for sure. We tried so many different things. So oh, good, 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 Puerto good. Rican food. Yeah, we're um. We have someone coming to visit us next Friday, uh, and we're going to order in. So I'm looking forward to it. Save some of your, save some of your macros, Nate. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, to, today's topic. We're going to we're, we're continuing on with the mobility discussion because you are a mobility expert and you have a tremendous amount of experience working with, you know, barbell based athletes and a strength based approach to mobility. When we talk about strength. Most people just start to think muscles. They think how big are the muscles, how hard do the muscles feel and look and, (laughs) you know, all of the above. But what is actually one of the, what's the missing piece to that when people are thinking about strength? Well, the way I look at it is capacity. Like the way I like to describe it, especially because when we dive into the topic of mobility and people just generally think range of motion, the way I like to describe it is like capacity. How much stress can your joints or your muscles handle within the commonly compromised positions or the positions that you're, you're end range, deeper ranges of motion? How much stress can you handle there if you're pushed there by the barbell? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's kind of strength. That's how we look at it. And so there's multiple, there's two parts to that. There's the the muscle tissue, the soft tissue, and then what's the other component that most people don't even consider? Um, the nervous system. Yeah. So the soft tissue will be the actual structural thing that's going to hold you there. But in order to actually get into those positions, your nervous system has to accept those ranges of motion. And that's kind of a big thing that I've been trying to introduce to the audience, to the market in itself, is that mobility training really is, I'm a big fan of educating on the deeper levels of the why behind certain things. So I like to really dive into the context and the nuances. And uh, mobility training really is a game of influencing the nervous system. Mm. And the more we can do that easily, the better our chances are at improving mobility. So 
over time, over years of doing this, we've found kind of like a, a bit of a recipe or, you know, a, uh, like a bit of a concoction of ways to do it most effectively, depending on the individual and what they're struggling with. So you have the hack to get people's nervous systems. That sounds very fancy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really like, I, I don't want to make it seem like it's some kind of secret thing. It's actually far more simple than what I think the industry does a good job at doing, which is unnecessarily overcomplicating things. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to just share it all. Like I don't, I, we have nothing to hide and we don't have any secret. It, it's all things that have been done for countless years, decades. It's just that we kind of organize it in a way that improves mobility instead of your back squat. And that's what like, makes for a great professional, somebody who can just take the stuff and organize it in a way. I'm, I relate to that so much that it's like, I don't have the secrets. I just know what works and we organize it this way and people can actually get the value and benefit from it. Right. We've just kind of discovered what our obsession, what our passions are sure. and just organize the things that already make sense in, in a logical way. Is there an analogy you like to use or how do you break down the, the discussion of nervous system to somebody like who mm. doesn't quite understand it, you know, cause I, I've tried different analogies and I talk about like, you know, hardware and software and like, you know, the, the, computer language as well, but I'd love to hear if, how you approach that with somebody. So, well, with the way we approach it and the way we kind of play around with the nervous system, the way it makes the most sense in my mind is seeing it as somewhat of like a bodyguard. The nervous system is there to protect you and certain range of mo ranges of motion and certain deep positions have been deemed unsafe for whatever reason, whether that's your lifestyle and just not being exposed to those positions for at any time, really, or whether that's an injury or discomfort or pain, all of those things can cause um, a sensation from your nervous system to feel like they're unsafe for whatever reason. So the nervous system's job at that point is to keep you safe. And so what it does is that it, it basically tightens up your muscles to make sure you don't get exposed to those ranges of motion in a way that you can't come back from. And uh, I feel like that resonates with people a lot. It's like, hey, I'm here to protect you. I'm not going to let you go through this door because what's beyond this door, I don't know what's beyond that door. It's dangerous though. Mm -hmm. I just, I, anytime I go, uh, I see people going through that door, I hear them screaming, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe it's cheering, maybe it's fearful screaming, who knows, but it's dangerous. I don't want you going in there. And that's kind of like what the nervous system does is that it'll protect you from those deeper ranges of motion because there's little stretch receptors in your muscles. And when they get stretched too quickly or stretched beyond what they have deemed to be like that max range of motion where they feel safe, they'll send um, uh, a signal up to your, your spinal cord and it'll send a signal back to the muscle that basically just says contract. Mm. You have no control over that. It's called the stretch reflex. It's an autonomic uh, nervous system response and it'll contract your muscle and stop you from lengthening it any further. Mm. So when a muscle feels tight or short, like you're like, Oh, I can stretch out my hamstring just by straightening out my leg. That's because your, your stretch receptors, your, your stretch reflex is excitable. It's telling, it's your nervous system saying we can't go any further than that because we don't know what's beyond that door, so mm. to speak. Yeah, wow. Well, um, I love the bodyguard analogy. It's uh, it 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 resonates with me and um, a lot of what I've you know tried to talk about with clients. But it it's just a better way of saying it. It's like it's there to protect you, you know. And do you have a, a way or a method that you use to illustrate that in like real time with like clients? Like, let me. Let me show you, you know, there's, you see these like, hey, do this thing and then move your body this way and then now touch your toes. And suddenly people are like, oh, I can put my whole hand on the floor. Like what, ha I got more mobile in two seconds. Like, do you use anything like that to, to illustrate it? Yeah, we've done some fun stuff in like some challenges that we used to run in the past where it was like, before you do any mobility, when you're cold, sit down, do a, a deep squat and hold it for 10 seconds. Take note of what you feel. 
how are your knees feeling? How are your hips? Like how deep are you in the position? Even take a video or a photo just so you can kind of get external feedback as to what's going on. Mm -hmm. Do your mobility work and then go back. And then they'll see that they're like three inches deeper and their hips feel great and whatever else. And they're like, your mobility work is incredible. I can't believe you're able to do that. And we kind of take it back and we're like, as much as I want to take credit for all that, that is not going to last at all. Like Mm -hmm. what you just noticed right there is simply just your nervous system responding to stimulus, Mm -hmm. right? So that's where kind of progressive overload would come in to make sure that that actually improves over time. Yep. But that's kind of like a quick way that we've played around with that and shown people in the past where we've had like thousands of people in one of our challenges go through that and then just be mind blown and be like, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. Uh, But really you've experienced that before. You've just, you've, you have just never been kind of told to pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like, Hey, sit in the deep squat, touch your nose and spin around three times and then sit in a deep squat again. Yeah. (laughs) You know? Yeah. And in, in this case, the touch your nose, spin around is like, do these three or five protocols right. with the intentionality that we, we we tell you to bring to it and then go back and do this. Because, you know, realistically, like your soft tissue cannot change by 10, 15 degrees, you know, three inches deeper in the span of 30 minutes. Like that, that, that doesn't happen, correct? Correct. And like, it's, you know, the reason I really kind of hammer in the whole uh, nervous system thing is because is that um, when you're stretching a muscle and it feels longer after you've stretched it like oh I got a bit more range of motion that feels good you're not actually adding length to the tissue Mm -hmm. you're not making the muscle tissue inherently longer it still had that length you're Mm -hmm. just accessing deeper ranges of motion because you've influenced the nervous system in that time period yeah so tomorrow when you come back it's probably going to be just the same as what you just felt. Mm. Right. So you're not adding length. Oh, that's a common misconception is like, I'm making my hamstrings longer. Yeah. You're really just like, yeah, right. Them. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's hard to explain yeah. a little bit. No, I, 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 <laughs> I am giggling. Cause it just like people who say like, I want to make, I want to get long and lean muscles, you know, like they just, that's more from like an aesthetic standpoint. Right, right, like, right. I want to, I want to get long. I'm like, well, your muscle just goes from like your bicep just goes from your elbow to your exactly. <laughs> shoulder. Like it doesn't. It's not. It's getting not getting longer. any longer. Yeah, um, but that's that's more of an aesthetics thing. That's people wanting to be lean and not have body <laughs> fat. But on this topic, I'll come back to it and say that I have been personally frustrated at times where I didn't. I would okay. I'm. I have a good nervous system, you know, uh, engaged mobility mm-hmm. session. I feel better positions and I'll come back a week later and it's like, Oh, I, I've regret. Like I'm not, I, what I, what I gained, I lost some, like it was not like, um, and I know we're going to get into this, but this idea of progressive overload, I have been frustrated personally with mobility at times where maybe I wasn't applying progressive overload or I wasn't, T- like touching on these positions with a frequency that would build on itself, right? It's like, hey, I had a, I, I ate good on Monday, but then I ate shitty all week, and then I came back on Monday, and I'm pissed because I didn't lose any weight. It's like, well, you got to string together multiple days. You got to be more consistent with it. Talk about like, you know, well, introduce the notion of progressive overload as it relates to mobility training, mm. and maybe what are some, you know benchmarks you use for that or uh at least how you how you speak about it with clients so that they can start to appreciate like yeah you could touch your toes today you got some you you got some range don't be surprised if you come back next week on the same day and right it's gone yeah well i think first part of that is important to touch on is that again we're we're working with the nervous system right so there's so many things that can affect how the nervous system responds to something. Mm. If you're stressed from life stuff, if you've had a shitty, sorry, I don't know if I can go. Let it fly, (laughs) baby. If you've had a shitty sleep the night before, or if your nutrition's been off, you're dehydrated, like all these things can have some kind of an influence, which actually can affect your range of motion. So I think that that's important to understand is that like there's like the progress, the progression to 
your goals, just like anything else, is never completely linear, right? So there's always going to be kind of like a bit of a roller coaster ride along that that way. So if you come back the following week, you're like, that feels tighter than last week. Well, okay, if if you're going to complain about that, and not that that's wrong to complain about it, but if that's something that is coming up, then we need to look at multiple different factors as to why that's even happening, Mm -hmm. right? Because Again, nervous system. We're playing that game. Now, when it comes to progressive overload, which is the, the way we actually influence the nervous system over time, it's important that we understand what principles have the most, uh, the most play or what influence, or sorry, what principles can we use as the most effective tools within our tool belt to improve mobility because some things are just very challenging to do so if you look at progressive overload in like a traditional strength protocol you're going to see we're going to add five to ten percent loading or whatever right or five to ten pounds on the barbell per week that becomes extremely challenging to do when you're working on independent biomechanical functions right like if Mm -hmm. you're just I'm rotating my hip. How am I supposed to throw a barbell on that? Yeah. Right? That becomes very challenging to do. So we look at different principles that we can implement that aren't going to complicate it unnecessarily. So the ver- the other principles that we can play around with is like a reduction of rest period. Okay. And that's one of my favorite ones to use for... Um, for beginners, because basically we're just getting to them to do a very similar amount of work, just with a greater level of fatigue. Right. So, so like, hold a deep squat for a minute, rest a minute. Hold another deep squat for a minute, rest a minute. And then week the following two, week, yeah, thirty. Hold a deep squat for a minute, rest thirty seconds. Yeah. Hold a deep squat. Right. So you're just reducing the rest period by fifteen, thirty seconds, whatever. Just uh, making sure that they're working through more greater fatigue. Yeah. Um, and that's very approachable. It's like, you're not having to change much. It's just, let's rest less. And that, that is a way to improve how some, how strong somebody is in a certain position or their capacity in, in some way. Um, we also look at increased volume. So we'll increase sets or we'll increase reps, which is also very common with a traditional strength protocol. Mm-hmm. We'll increase, uh, tempo will increase pauses, mm-hmm. holds, stuff like that. And these are all principles that we are able to manipulate in a way that builds strength in, uh, in the like biomechanical functions of your joint. So again, if we're trying to improve external rotation of your shoulder that you can load relatively easily, but, um, you know, like hip flexion or hip extension or, internal rotation of the hip, that kind of thing. Uh, those kind of things can be very challenging to put load on. Yep. So we find ways, other ways to manipulate the, the process a bit. And I would imagine that you still also find ways to implement external loading. loads. Yes. And loading or just loading in general. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that doesn't have to be weights, right? Mm-hmm. So we could, like, you can use a wall, you can use the floor, you can use a bench. Yeah. These are all things, like, if you understand the intention behind the particular movement that you're trying to do, mm-hmm. you can easily apply loading just by your intention, the way you're approaching the movement with yeah. your body weight or just with the engagement, the amount of intensity you're applying to it as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 can, I, re- I can relate to that in you know periods of time where let's say i've been working the middle split position more often and you know each week like i'm not necessarily getting closer and closer to the ground but like when i'm holding a middle split i can feel myself being able to press into the floor with my you know my adductors like i can really drive my feet i can feel and then that's me like okay i'm holding the same position i was last week but this week instead of having to hold myself up on a on a box or a bench, like to alleviate some of my body weight, I can do it without my hands on the bench. Right. That's now I'm holding more of my own body weight. That's capacity. Yeah. Like that is the introduction, like the early stages of strength. Right. And then eventually you'll be able to get a barbell on your back and yes. progress it in that way. And then, then I'll be like Juji Mufu. And doing- <laughs> Dude. <laughs> yeah. He, he's very mobile. Yes. Yeah. Right. He, he has mobility <laughs> he for has, sure. He has all the mobilities. <laughs> <laughs> um, going back to, uh, you know, staying on the topic of nervous system, you talked about somebody's having 
obstacles that they're running into with their mobility program. Um, oh, I'm tighter this week. There's all of these other things in life that impact your nervous system. Um, not to like, this isn't like a fear thing or like, and we're going to save pain for another conversation, but I've had the experience as a coach where, and this, I called it the Saturday morning CrossFit uh, phenomenon. People have their whole normal week. They get to Friday, they go blow off some steam, have a bunch of drinks, maybe stay up late. There were more injuries in the Saturday morning CrossFit class than really any other time. I always would talk about like, well, you just punished your nervous system last night. Right. You came in, you know, your nervous system was at like 20% of its capacity. It was a little on the fritz. And you didn't have as much control in some positions. Um, I guess the, the question to that is like, you know, do you talk about protecting or, you know, lifestyle factors to optimize your nervous system in order to help clients with their mobility practice or generally just make them more stable in the positions that they want to be in when they're doing their barbell, you know, training? Yeah, well, with our protocols, we're definitely very focused on influencing the nervous system through the work that we do yeah. in improving those positions, but we're big proponents of recovery. Okay. Um, so we also have recovery protocols that we give our clients, our, our members, because that's a very important part of the process as well. And the work that we do to improve mobility should not look the same as what you're doing to try to improve your recovery or okay. to recover after something like a hectic workout or yeah maybe a night out or whatever you know sure. what i mean so um one thing that i was talking to sorry to interrupt but i think that's an important distinction because a lot of people think like in order to recover i got to go do my mobility work they think that that's right. inherently like recovery right and and what you've shared is that when you do real mobility work you're actually taxing the nervous system yes. it's it's more work yeah and so exactly. um yeah go i, I just wanted to like make sure that that was everyone else heard that too right <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad you highlighted that and that's something that i was diving into yesterday on the podcast i was telling you i was on yeah. earlier um there's a there's a substantial difference yeah mobility training is work it should never feel easy and if it feels good like while you're doing it you're not applying enough intensity because again the game is to influence the nervous system to have have that the result that we're looking for, which is moving better under the barbell. Well, that's who we support, right? Yeah, People sure. who care about the barbell and are under it relatively often. Moving better under the barbell, feeling confident within those deeper positions that your joints can handle the stress that the barbell is going to place on it. And just feeling like comfortable, like your joints don't cause those creaky, achy discomfort feelings while you're down there. Yep. Um, that's what we're trying to do when we approach uh, mobility training, and that yeah. requires intensity. Recovery, we want to calm the nervous system. So mm -hmm. we always tell people when they're like, "When's the best time to do our, our mobility work?" I said, "Don't just, whatever you do, don't do it before bed. That's all I'm telling you. For real, oh, don't yeah. do it before bed. Uh, my preferred time is to do it before a workout, and th that's because we're going to be." improving the the ranges of motion we're going to be improving the capacity of the joints and how your muscles feel within certain positions and then you're going to get under a barbell mm -hmm. load it up and develop more strength within those ranges of motion yeah. so you're just kind of it's compounding the results a little bit right uh, somebody that does uh, uh, let's pause there for a second because somebody that does like a very hard mobility session because it's uh, the way my Buddy Amir talks about it, or I've heard him say it. Um, is like, you're, it's 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 joint specific strength training is what exactly. it is. Exactly. So you go do joint specific strength training, and then you're going to go do your barbell work afterwards. There's there's benefit to the positions you'll be in, but there's also the the drawback of like, well, you just strength train before you strength train. So right. there is, you know, maybe expect that you might not 
be able to PR, you know, something Correct. like that. Yeah. yeah. So I'll often tell our athletes that are serious about what they're doing in the gym. Like if they're looking to compete at the games or they're looking to compete on some form, like some stage for Olympic weightlifting, we'll often tell them like, don't do your mobility training before you're looking to max out on anything because yeah. that's going to be counterproductive for right. you. Because again, you are taxing the nervous system. And yeah. so, as you said, we're, we are strength coaches, but we're just, the intention is biomechanical strength as opposed to like absolute strength. Yeah. And it's also like, well, what, what's the priority right now? If mobile, if, if you're limited in how you're performing in your sport by your mobility, then it would be it would make sense to place that first. The mobility training is the thing that you need to to tackle before your training and make it you know come with your best intensity. Mm. Don't save it for after a grueling mm. you know thirty minute metcon and yep. then try and go and activate your nervous system to do something meaningful. You you just won't get a lot done. Yeah, exactly. Because the amount of intensity that is required for genuine mobility training like that's something that it's a skill almost to develop mm -hmm. it'll take some time to learn how to do that um you're right like you you need a good percentage of your energy and you'll feel relatively taxed so if you feel like you have a big training session coming up i still feel like it's more beneficial in many many cases to do it before the workout than okay. afterwards yeah so i would say usually i give a window like i want it done within two hours of the workout okay because your nervous system will still have responded to that and you'll still be able to gain those benefits under the barbell afterwards mm -hmm. um but if you do it two hours before you've had enough time to kind of recuperate that energy level a little bit as opposed to if you just did a heavy mobility session and then immediately get under the barbell for some heavy squats and you're going for a pr like you're trying to one rep max yeah your nervous system's going to be a little like the hips will be fried a little bit and yeah you know what i mean makes perfect sense to me i hope it makes sense to the audience and i want to just so the way i want to move this conversation forward is to kind of selfishly bring it back to like functional bodybuilding and the way i you know i know that in my crossfit days i put a lot more time and energy into my training and i would create windows of time to have specific mobility practice, have specific recovery practices, have, you know, my training session, like all the things. And it added up to a lot of hours, which most people don't have. Um, in our first episode, if you didn't listen to it, go back, you know, we talk about how we can simplify things and just maybe get some some more quick wins with some some simple, you know, ideas and action steps. That makes me a big fan of how do I bring mobility training into my actual gym sessions, my strength work. Like we did a lifting session the last two days. How can we take some of these principles of mobility and nervous system training and apply them to bodybuilding, to our actual strength work? I think that's why I've always been such a big fan of your approach is that it's the moment I was introduced to FBB, I recognized right away that there is a, like a, a high intention of applying deep ranges of motion. Like we're aiming to get into those deeper ranges under loading. And I think that that is a great way to improve your mobility and maintain it. Very, very important, maintaining your mobility. Mm -hmm. um, but I also believe that that is more approachable and e more easily done for more advanced lifters or those mm. that are actually more have a little bit more proprioception and have a little bit better control within their ranges of motion i think that those that are a little bit more newer beginners to movement under barbells and just loading up their ranges of motion will benefit m more from uh, a specific mobility protocol because then mm. they're actually learning like the way we approach mobility with our programs we have a high intention on proprioception as well mm. And that carries over very well into the barbell, into uh, the gym, I should yeah. say. And so I think that the way you approach movement and your training, your your protocols, um, there's so much benefit there for 
particularly for those that are a little bit more advanced that have more proprioception, I think they'll be able to get the most out of that. Yeah. Whereas those that aren't super familiar with how to move as effectively as possible and engage their muscles through the entire range of motion, um, that'll be more challenging to get that same benefit from, Understood. in my opinion. Yeah. No, that's great. And, and, and this is a good closing uh, thought and point is, you know, what is like the, the, the time horizon to, or, or sort of like the, the long, what's the long view of, of mobility? And, and from what I'm hearing, correct me if I'm wrong, it's like, you know, somebody's relatively new and a beginner. We want to simplify things down, get them started spending time in positions. But then if they, we identify areas that they, they lack control and they lack good mobility, then that has to, that's a very specific intentional set of protocols to get stronger in those positions. And it may take months, maybe years. And then the long game is like, okay, spend the time getting those positions, building them, and then don't lose them by simply just carrying them into the work that you do ongoing with strength and strength training. And so does that arc seem like you know, I feel like that's the arc that I went on certainly over the past decade and a half. Um, but does that does that jive with kind of the long term approach of mobility for you? I think it tracks. I also think that there's there's still a ton of benefits in a addressing your mobility as like an additional component to your training protocol mm -hmm. just for joint health in mm -hmm. general. Um, but yeah, like that's a lot of what we try to harp onto our, our members is like do your mobility work. And then when you're in the gym and you're under the barbell and you're under the loading, don't be afraid to get like, feel the stretch sometimes. Sure. Right. Like don't be afraid, like in a front rack position, for example, don't be afraid to grab the bar a little bit wider just to expose external rotation in the shoulder just a little bit more mm -hmm. this week, mm -hmm. you know, just to like use the ranges of motion that we're trying to improve here. Yeah. And that in itself is going to, one, you're just going to start to notice over time that you feel better holding the barbell in that front rack position. Yes. As opposed to like, if you're holding it narrow every time, just because that habitually, that's where you've gotten comfortable. Yeah. Your front rack position will never improve because you're never actually exposing Challenge. it mm, yeah oh gosh perfect example is that it was like front rack for me for years fingertips right right and then eventually i was like i got to get this stronger i want to be able to clean more and i'll be able to do that better if i can hold my full palm on the grip and i won't have to like you know i'm doing crossfit i don't want to have to re-grip and eventually i was like i need to be able to do a good front rack with my th with my thumb in a hook grip and then i just basically would only front squat with like full palm grip hook grip and i got into a, a really good rack position and it made a world of difference in my ability to clean really heavy because i could just i didn't have to worry about the bar rolling back into my fingers losing control of the bar and that was me being intentional about like when i squat i'm going to challenge myself because it if you squat with your th hook grip it feels awful <laughs> hook grip wide hands front squat like it's it does a big stretch it's a huge stretch yeah and over time my body adapted, adapted to that because to it, i exactly because i exposed it yeah. yeah yeah and that's like a big comp like that's kind of what we're doing here yeah we're just getting you into these positions and yep. exposing you to them getting you there more frequently putting in work and then you get better at them yeah that's what the body does it adapts to the stimulus it's placed under right so beautiful improve it with your mobility training expose it within your within the gym and then over time that's just going to improve more awesome man okay well that that's a wrap on nervous system getting some intention into your training before we go, Matt, tell the audience how they can either get in touch with you, learn more from you, or if, if, they, if they resonate a lot and they want to become one of your clients, where can they go? So you could start by checking us out on our website. So www.primalmobility.com. You can check out our end range program there. That is like the most introductory program that we're going to have. And you'll be getting some incredible results there for a good rate, very cheap and introductory. So that'll be helpful. Um, if you have questions and want to interact with me personally, you can just jump over to my Instagram, primal.mobility. Uh, so 
at primal dot mobility and <laughs> yeah <laughs> toss me toss me a dm there and i'm very responsive and love interacting and answering any questions and guiding people in the right direction so awesome you guys should definitely go give them a follow i know most of you listeners are on instagram um lots of good information there and check their website out and again thank you for joining us thank you sir yeah.